My job in cybersecurity is helping clients respond to and recover from cybersecurity incidents. I want to share with you today some of the common habits that I've seen in both personal and a professional setting and which people are doing to increase the risk of them getting hacked. Share this video with the people that you know that are guilty of having this habit. Number one, passwords. If the password shown on the screen is or was your password, when investigating a security incident, it's actually quite common, unfortunately, to find a user's password stored somewhere hidden in a folder or even in plain sight. Weak passwords don't take long to crack and common passwords are actually easy to figure out. And I think it should be noted that you should not be using the same password over and over again. My recommendation to fix that habit is to consider using a password manager, such as Bitwarden. It's free to use for personal use and it will help you with password management. So whenever you create an account, you can have it automatically create a random password generated for you. Just please make sure your master password for Bitwarden or whatever password manager you're using is a nice and long passphrase. For example, wow, this is some great advice, my DFIR. Habit number two, blindly trusting sign-in pages. I'm sure you have received emails in the past asking you to click on this link and sign in, or even guilty of clicking on a free giveaway link and asking you to sign in. Well, if you did sign in, you might have just given your credentials for free to the hackers. And unfortunately, this is very common in cybersecurity and it's what we like to call credential harvesting. So what is the solution for habit two? Always double check the site that is presenting you a sign in page. Many times these credential harvesters, they tend to duplicate legitimate email providers such as Gmail or Outlook to make it look authentic. But if you actually take a step back and look for a second at the website URL bar, you could avoid handing over your credentials for free, making it a little more difficult for hackers to get into your account. Habit number three, avoid using multi-factor authentication or not even turning it on. For those that are not aware of what multi-factor authentication is, it is using two or more authentication factors to validate your identity, such as something you know, like your password, something you have, like your phone, and something you are, like your fingerprint. Going back to some of the incidents that I've investigated over the course of my career, I usually trace it back to a user account that had been compromised and unfortunately did not have any multi-factor authentication turned on. Now, if multi-factor was turned on, would that user still have been compromised? Maybe, but it will delay the attacker due to multi-factor authentication. Solution, please do not skip this step. Although multi-factor authentication is not an end-all be-all solution, it is a step in the right direction to make it, again, a little more difficult for hackers to compromise your account. The most common multi-factor authentication method that I've seen is sending a text message to your phone and validate it from there. However, I don't really recommend that method. Instead, I would recommend you install an authentication app such as Microsoft or Authy. Habit number four, trusting files downloaded from the internet. More often than not, hackers love renaming their malware into something that appears legitimate. Typically, your antivirus will pick up any malicious files that were downloaded and executed on your machine, but sometimes that's just not the case. I've investigated multiple security incidents related to malware, especially ones that are called info stealers. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It steals your information. Which brings me to a side note. Whenever you sign in and your browser asks if you want to save this password in this browser, please don't save your credentials in your browser because info stealer malware are known to steal this information. So in those security incidents, unfortunately, the antivirus did not catch this malware due to its size, but there are some signs that you as the user should be aware of to avoid double clicking and executing malware. So this solution is again, not an end all be all, but it is nice to know. One thing you can do on your machine is enable file name extension. This will visually let you see the file extension of a certain file. Hackers love to trick users into executing their malware by masquerading their malware into, for example, a PDF document. When in reality, that PDF document is actually an executable. If the hacker is lazy, you might actually be able to catch this technique by looking at the file extension. For example, what I've seen in the wild is that somebody would download what seems to be a PDF file, but in reality, it is a .exe file. And if you have the file extension checked, 
you can actually see that the file name would be report.pdf.exe. Now, if you did not have that option checked, you would see it as report.pdf, which would trick some users into thinking that it is a PDF document and double click that document and execute the malware. So in summary, the habits that I see people do are utilizing weak passwords or common passwords, fall victim to credential harvesting, skip enabling multi-factor authentication, and trusting files downloaded from the internet. I highly encourage anybody that is watching this to really think about their online security and make it difficult for hackers to break in to your account. Majority of the cybersecurity incidents that I've been involved in related back to a compromised identity. By changing our security habits and following best practices, we can reduce the risk and protect ourselves from unauthorized access. If you are somebody who wants to get started in cybersecurity, you don't have to do this alone which is why I created a website called mydfir.com, which you can sign up for free mentorship, no strings attached. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to.